How's it going? All right. Just did a few quick little recordings for reviews that I've been slacking on editing. So this is a body armor watermelon strawberry. These spin drift drinks are very nice. It's just carbonated water, a little bit of fruit juice. In this case, this 12 ounce can is three grams of sugar. So very pleasant. And I also went to McDonald's. This is unsweetened tea. All right. Get my preview. Kind of weird looking at the few seconds behind. I did transfer a few projects to my archive that I'd finished, but it was only maybe, uh, I thought I fixed in Windows when you resize things. So for example, here, it's not working again, but I had changed the setting in Windows to hopefully make it easier to resize it, resize Windows by now, but they basically don't function well at the top. And that's usually what I use to resize things. I think it might be Chrome partly because it works there and it works here. See how much easier it is? Yeah, it's got to be Chrome. They've done something to it to make it difficult. Kind of not cool. All right. So, like I said, I did. What is this? ITG Mania. I've been messing around with Step Mania, ITG Mania, uh, all that step head stuff. Trying to get better more exercise, things like that, and messing around with the idea of streaming it. I did do that quick, very not quality stream on a whim a while back. And there were quite a few uh, songs flagged by Twitch and YouTube. Twitch only flagged two, two songs. YouTube flagged four. And I've started making or deleting songs from one song list of the stuff gets flagged. It's not a huge deal if I left them in because there's no real consequence it appears to be on both platforms, but it's a consideration. So I might, you know, honestly, all the songs I've talked about this like yesterday, day before all the songs have the potential to get flagged because it's just how copyright copy, how it works but uh might make a list of songs that don't get flagged as i go but that means i'll have to stream them to see what happens uh that said, I'm going to do a quick little potential video talking about old laptops. I don't... Uh, take these off. Yeah, for the tech channel, it just seemed like a quick little idea that would be interesting to talk about. It's pretty heavy. Okay. So I'm going to do this like I'm recording a video because I'll potentially turn it into a video. Actually, I should do a recording. Yeah, I'll do that. So I'll do a local recording, which I just started. OBS is great. Okay. How can I do this? Um... It's probably making a lot of noise in the microphone. Ooh. All right. 
old laptops. They have a lot of uses potentially. There are a few things that I have done to these to make them a little safer and more reliable to use in whatever situation you decide on. Obviously, what the laptop is going to have a battery inside. In my opinion, it's good to take out the battery, but there are some quirks related to that, which I'll get to. So, for example, I picked this laptop up maybe a few years ago now on eBay's certified refurbished thing. It was a bad idea. The laptop was in terrible condition, but I fixed it up. I didn't return it because I actually made a quick little video about fixing it up. But anyways, it functions at the very least. I put some more RAM in it. I put a SSD in it. So it's decently quick considering. This specific one is a Dell. Take a look. Dell Latitude E5250. Has a Intel i5 5300U, I believe. Does Just has integrated graphics, so there are some limitations. Does have a webcam, uh, you know, basic laptop. It's decently small, but the battery that came with it was not great. I still have it, but I did take the battery out. The laptop works just fine, plugged into AC power without a battery inside. There are some quirks, like I mentioned. You can't update firmware without the battery inside. There are some ways to get around it, but if you do take your battery out, consider... You'll, you should keep it if you can. In my case, I use, or I put batteries into containers that are fireproof, quote unquote. A little dusty, but for example, this is a fireproof bag and I store batteries inside wherever I put them. I'll redo that. So this is a fireproof bag. I store laptops, batteries, whatever inside. Obviously, if they're not charged, you're not going to have a problem. But safer than sorry type of thing. So here's the... Here's the battery that came with the Dell laptop. They had misconfigured the laptop, so this battery was left uncharged and in a bad state for a long time it still works technically but i just don't need it i don't use it i don't take these laptops out really doing anything with them where i need to be mobile so i don't care much about the battery it's just easier not to have it in the computer charging uncharging as i use the computer so i just prefer to take it out when at all possible In that case, I put it into a fireproof bag. Not really fireproof, but it's fire resistant. So that's good to go. Same thing with the other laptop's battery. And I just wrap them in a Ziploc bag or something. So this one's even in worse shape for the other laptop. It's older, slightly, like a year, year older. But uh, still keep them around in case. It's pretty easy, at least in the case of this laptop. You got a little mix of screws to come out. They're all the same size. Very easy to take off the panel. Swap the battery out. If you want to get a new one, you can easily do that with this generation laptop. But in my case, it just works fine not having a battery in here. The one thing I've been trying to use this with now is setting up a second streaming location I have a different computer there to do Step Mania. It's like a step pad game where it's really great for exercise. In that case, I want to do some streaming down there. Different setup. I'm going to hook up some webcams to this and just basically have it ready to go when I need it. And this is just fine for streaming. 
this specific laptop does not have dedicated graphics, does not have much in the way of dedicated encoding, but it does have Intel's quick sync functionality with the processor. So that's a little better than just straight CPU based encoding for video. And yeah, so if your laptop has quick sync, definitely check it out. It does work with OBS and it's a nice alternative, a little better than just straight CPU encoding. In this case, this is an old Acer laptop. It's a little bigger, but it has a much, much nicer screen. It's actually a little bit older, so the processor isn't quite as good. And it actually does have a dedicated NVIDIA GPU in here. It's a 750M, which is pretty much unsupported by NVIDIA now. The latest drivers for the graphics are from 2019. And I don't think, at least with that driver, it supports any type of hardware encoding for video, which is a big negative. But I might mess around with drivers and see if an even older driver will work with OBS, because I could have sworn I had to use this as my first, I did use, yeah, I did use this as my first streaming device back doing when I was streaming Super Nintendo games on Twitch, and that worked out. So I'll have to look around and try to figure out if this is still capable of doing hardware encoding for the video, but it it's at the very least a functional laptop. Again, with the battery removed, it's much safer and just simple. It works. Plug it in. You know, there's no hassles, really. So it's all good to go. Still works with Windows 10. No issues. Windows 11 is a problem. So if you do want to use Windows 11, you need a laptop or any other type of computer with a TPM device and potentially other things to consider with that. I haven't even used Windows 11 at this point. But... At the very least, know that there will be potential issues with old hardware in Windows 11. And my arm itches. Yeah. Oops. I don't know what to do with this. So as long as you have a functioning AC adapter, you can even buy third-party AC adapters. There are definitely quite a few available for old laptops. You can do that. Plug it in. Take the battery out. It works just fine. Oops. Various options you could potentially do. Not options, but a few ideas you could potentially consider with an old laptop. Again, setting up for streaming. In my case, that's going to be very nice and simple. The big benefit of an old laptop is going to be very efficient. So they have the processors inside old laptops are extremely efficient. Even older stuff, you'll probably do much under 50 watts running unless it's like a gaming focused laptop from previous decades or whatever. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but besides that, you could use it for retro games. You could put it in a arcade setup, like a arcade cabinet that you make, put a laptop in there. It's going to be fine for old retro stuff. Essentially set up sensors and do like home automation things. Again, an old laptop would be just fine with the battery removed just for, just to be on the safe side. Uh, maybe even uh, TV, you could do streaming video stuff. And again, the laptop's are very compact and easy to use in those situations, easy to stow in certain areas. You don't even need to use the screen on the laptop as long as it has, as it, as long as it has some type of HDMI out or other video out functionality that you can use with a TV. Yeah. Uh, what other things? I'm just winging this. I'm just coming up with stuff and I'll put B-roll other other things on top to make it work. Uh, I don't know what else. You could potentially take this and make a new frame for it. In this specific case, this laptop has a touch screen, so I could maybe turn it into a tablet again may get a new battery for it or something like that but haven't attempted that attempted to do <laughs> i did do, do i have not attempted to turn this into a tablet but it could be 
I don't know why I'm stuttering here. It could potentially be used in DIY situations because it is pretty compact, pretty functional. Uh, let me redo that. The size is beneficial from old laptops considering the motherboard's got to be pretty small. It's very thin, so you could put it into DIY projects very easily, and you've got a full computer in a small compact area. Um, again, you don't need the battery most of the time. You don't need the battery most likely in those situations. Obviously, there might be some specific laptops that would require you to have the battery, but I haven't run into those so far. And yeah, it's just very functional, pretty cheap if you go old enough on the laptop, and a good project type of computer. Very efficient, too. Okay, that should be good. Just a few ideas on using old laptops for whatever projects and other things you might want to do. Pretty efficient, pretty compact, potentially low-cost option. Uh, what is my... Tech, I suppose, thanks. I couldn't even remember what my tech YouTube channel was. That should be good. And I'll stop the recording. So one of the negatives is I've been stacking video projects up and not editing fast enough. So it's... I've even just, like, not acted on certain ideas that I've had or certain products that I've purchased and then I make reviews on them. I just didn't bother in some cases. Because editing is just... That's the top difficulty with trying to do all this stuff like the most time expense I should say all right so in this case oops I forgot to copy my one of these drink reviews windows just decided to make my task bar I have it on a different different screen make it not be on top of other screens or other windows I should say Come on. No, it's not going to co cooperate. All right. Let's see. I'm not going to show this, but... OBS is one of the best pieces of software, especially free software, around for doing so many things video related doing screen capture stuff doing what i'm doing here by even doing local recordings and streaming at the same time it's super versatile but obviously it's not perfect because i have had some issues with their new application audio capture beta however it's from what i've researched so far it might be windows itself as the problem and not obs's API calls and stuff like that, which is irritating, but it's a nice feature to take certain audio sources. So, for example, I have music playing in my live uh, stream, but it does not get saved into the VOD video on demand, The basically the file that is there after you finish streaming. But in some situations, it, some of the audio gets garbled. Not totally sure. I did change my audio interface settings a little bit. And at least brow like quickly browsing my last D&D stream, which is a long thing. I didn't notice it, but it's, it's a lot of time. So I didn't watch the entire thing. I just like skipped around. All right, as I talk and not focus on what I'm doing here. So I've already recorded three things today that I need to edit at some point. I did back up some of my video, which like it was like 300 gigabytes onto hard drives that I have. 
So it saved me a little bit of space. I mean, I've got 910 gigabytes of free space on my work drive. Mm. Where is the thing that I want? Why am I not seeing it? What? Video capture. Okay, here's the video I just recorded two seconds ago. Here's the... I know I've, I'm on a different screen, so I'm just talking to myself. Which is something I usually, or used to not do at all. But doing video, and you know, making video for online release kind of trains you to do certain things. Okay, so I got that. The fine art of talking to yourself is the thing. Might as well show this. All right. Get these things out of the way. Okay, so the way that I format my projects is I put the year first, 2024, and the month, so it's January at the moment. Old laptop uses, so we can take the video I just made, which Again, extremely efficient in coding here. It's a little harder to edit and deal with sometimes, but the the file savings is great because I like saving all of my old projects. I put work into them. I could potentially see, or I, I have gone back to things in the past and used pieces, so it's nice to save it all, but it is a lot of data and it builds up, so it's a challenge, but at the very least, I try to. I would like to continue. So in this case, this is extremely efficient in coding is good for the, the sake of backup, but it's not great for the sake of editing, especially on my old computer. It can be a little not amazing at times, but it's okay. All right. Oof. So I could potentially edit that. I could potentially edit a lot of things. Because it's, again, it just builds up. This one I'm not going to edit on stream because there's some, I don't want to show a person's, you know, the person who hosted it, I don't want to show their place. And so I have to be careful of show what I show in the video. And that's been sitting on my work drive for a long time. Uh, these things, these are when I went out to places and just did photo walks with different equipment. Mm. So this is a 55 millimeter M42 lens. Or I did a photo walk. Okay, this is just very simple. So this one's like not amazing footage or anything like that. And then I also, well, I did a little bit of B-roll type stuff too. I was testing this lens for radio radioactivity. This is a little Geiger counter thing. 
because a, a lot of older lenses, maybe not a lot, but a fair amount of older lenses can be slightly radioactive. They say that it's not a big deal, and it probably isn't, but it does measure like a noticeable difference compared to ambient radioactivity. This specific lens, I don't have it anymore. I had traded in to uh, KH. It was less than one of the other ones I had for a while, which was uh, Asahi Super Takamar, which is Pentax. But it's still measured above ambient. I just don't have a desire to keep those around. But I do like that era of lens, so it's kind of difficult. I want the lenses that aren't radioactive, even if they're worse quality. Because part of the reason they did these radioactive elements is because they were optically very nice and like probably cheaper to make. And back then, I guess they didn't care or whatever. I'm not sure, but... Anyways, I'll probably make that into something eventually. This lens I still have, it's a 28 older, older manual lens. And this one's not radioactive, so I've kept it around. Oh, that's my sister. Okay, I have to be careful with this one too, because I was with my sister and her child. I don't want to show like too much of them, so I have to be careful with that one. Uh, let's see. M6 to 11 to 22. This might be a similar situation. Well, that looks like Anderson Garden. Yeah, that might be a similar situation. A lot of these lenses I don't have anymore so it's basically if I can use it I can use it but I don't have potentially a ton of b-roll and things I I can actually source some of my old videos as well like for example if I did do some indoor you know filming the lens I can use that if I can find it so part of the consideration is making sure it's reasonably labeled and dated and stuff like that. Because sometimes I can use YouTube to search on my old videos to find things, and then I can go back in a list. And uh, I'll have the file name on YouTube, which will relate to these folder names, because I try to use the dated structure for the export to YouTube. That's kind of what I've naturally gravitated to over time. I didn't always do it, of course, but this is, it seems decent enough and it's not like super taxing on effort <laughs> to do it. So, one thing I probably should have done more is label my documents, online documents, is the same thing, and I haven't done that, and that's kind of bad because some of that information is useful. So I should try to be more consistent uh, in every aspect. But yeah, quite a few of these. So all of this, all of those projects are something I can do, but I would have to, at the very least, look, look it over, think of stuff to say, make a voiceover or a filmed like thing that I can intersperse this stuff with. So it's they're they're not even probably half done is what I'm saying. They've I did I went somewhere, I used some camera stuff, took some photos, so it's good, but it's just like there's a lot more to it. And it's most of this equipment I don't even have anymore. So I can't get any more B-roll and stuff if I need it or think I need it.
But it's still good stuff. It's still usable. I just have to commit the time to making a video out of it. Don't know what this is. HDR. GoPro footage. Okay, here's, this is Anderson Garden. It's a Japanese garden. I mean, technically. It was designed by a Japanese garden designer that's well known. But uh, it started as the backyard of these Anderson people. And then they eventually opened it up, and you know, now it's a nonprofit group, which I think is still run by their children. But uh, it's very nice. So in this case, this specific foot, this is GoPro 9 footage, but it's the 4 to 3 aspect ratio, I think. Yeah. Four th yeah, 4 to 3 ratio footage, which is nicer in these situations because it gives me more vertical space to use. So for example... If I want to convert it into a vertical video after I make the regular version, I'm going to have more space. If I want, not in this specific case, but when I have the camera visible in the frame, I generally want to show the camera visible in the frame, and having more vertical space gives me about a higher chance of the camera being shown, or can be shown. But in this specific case, it looks like I had whatever setup I was using. I think it was on the camera. Uh, so something like that, you know, you've got more more space, which is nice. <laughs> so this is a similar thing. I have to figure out what I was doing. In this case, it looks like I was doing... Uh, multiple frames at different exposures and then in software you can go and put them together to get more dynamic range so i'll have to figure that out and see what i was doing i guess i did a panorama type thing go look at this and see what it looks like Okay, so I probably used ACDC to generate this, or maybe this program. Okay, yeah, I probably used this photo HDR merge stack. Uh, maybe, I'm not sure. It was probably this program, considering it's this is the file format that it was. So multiple frames, you move your camera around, and then you can use software to put them together. You get more detail, you get more pixels, and depending on the software, obviously it's not going to be perfect, so you see this is wrong. So it's not going to be perfect, probably. But it's a thing. So quite a few videos of all that stuff. I have to, again, look it over, make voiceovers. And this one was a Museum of Science and Industry. I went with my friends. Just use a phone and a GoPro. So I could probably just make a little casual fun video out of this at some point. This was a wheelchair rugby. One of my photographer friends in this area, he's invited me to, uh, well, I mean, invited me to donate my time to this event to take photos. It's pretty fun. 
I've done it twice now, I think. I do have some videos on it the previous year, but I haven't done the last one that I did. I'm not sure when the next one is, so I should probably try to edit this. I was in kind of messing around with IRL streaming stuff, just a bunch of random recordings and things that I had tried. I could potentially make a video of, out of all of that stuff and ideas, but I bought some things and I didn't do stuff with it well. So it's kind of like, I don't know. So for example, I bought some uh, add-on lenses for phones because my phones that I have don't allow the ultra wide angle to work with streaming apps, which is really obnoxious. It's a mix of Android being stupid and their, like, phone manufacturers being stupid. So, I was, I still have all that stuff. I might try to make videos, like, reviews on the add-on lenses, but I haven't gotten to it, so it's just been sitting. And one of the negatives when you buy stuff for product reviews and stuff and you don't do it pretty quick is sometimes the thing goes out of stock and then there's, like, very little point making the video if it's not available you know it's a waste of time here's I was modifying a backpack for anime central because I tried streaming at it just to do you know with the phones and stuff so I could turn that into a video same thing here I haven't done the last Anime Central photo walk video. So I'll have to try to do this at some point before the next one. I haven't bought a ticket or a pa uh, badge. I have not bought a badge for ASIN 2024. This is going to be very expensive. And my car's transmission acts kind of weird in the summer on long trips. So I'm kind of like, Ugh, what do I do now with that thing? I don't know. So I feel like it's going to... What happens with the car is that in the summer on long trips, once I get to the location the car the transmission struggles downshifting it's an automatic but something's going on with it and then once it cools down it's fine for the most part but uh yeah it's concerning at the very least i don't really have the means to replace it right now So that's kind of a limiting thing for me at the moment, is that car. Because I don't want to get into a situation where I'm way out somewhere and the the thing is not working. Mm. Where was that? Uh, Ren Fair. Looks like I might have done a little bit of recording and photos at the last Renaissance Fair. Might be be able to, might be able to use that. Bunch of product review things, drink reviews. I got a huge amount of them. I haven't edited this screen that I bought. I've recorded some video on that, setting it up and using it. So it'll be a good tech video, product review. I should probably do that relatively soon. Hmm. I just saw someone start streaming. They have a pretty funny 
uh, on Twitch, when you start streaming, you can have a message. And their, their message was green bean. Yeah, so all of these need to be worked on. And then I also have these ones, which I want to prioritize because I've done, I recorded multiple things in these videos and I did one or two and then I need to finish them so I can back these up and get them out of here. Let's see how much space this takes up. Well, 75 gigabytes. So I should probably edit these next. But my editing has been not productive lately. <clears throat> All right. So here I did a review of, I think there were USB cables, and that's up and that's good. And I've seen some sales from that on Amazon. I put them on Amazon and also YouTube. I should probably do with other platforms too, but I don't have accounts for the tech stuff on those. Um... Let me see if there's any recent sales on that. Currently 5,041 views over the last 30 days on site Amazon. So that's basically when someone's on Amazon, they watch a video that I've made and put on there. I potentially get a sale if they buy it within a certain amount of time and they don't click on someone else's video in the same category. So I can either get the affiliate sale for that thing or for something in the same category. So it, it takes out some of the bias, but it's still a little bit limited because if they buy something like unrelated, I don't get anything from it, from it, which makes sense. But, uh, there is some limitation is what I'm saying. I don't want to show this page on on stream, but I can describe it. Describe it. Their website's kind of slow at times. So for the month, or I should say for the last. 30 days, $183 in commissions for on-site Amazon. I get less for the off-site stuff because that's based on my reach as a social whatever video person. So for example, man, Chrome... I, I I try to resize things from the top of Windows, as I just mentioned. And Chrome, for whatever reason, does not like that. I guess I can show this little bit. So here's the last... I don't remember what day this was, but it's the recent, most recent day. Probably yesterday or day before. Someone bought an uh, Xbox controller and they had watched, or two people bought this certain controller. They watched my video, they bought an Xbox controller, and I get $2.40 for two of them. <clears throat> um, someone bought these. T uh, cable tie things, which I've made a video on. Peak Design camera strap, 
also made a video on. Also this one. Um, I did make a video on a Tarion backpack, but I don't think it was that specific one. I did make a video on these specific Inez Bell wrist straps that I bought for a cosplay project last year. Another Xbox video. That one has probably paid for itself already. Because it's... I bought this controller at Best Buy and made a video on it focused on PC gaming. So I think there's a good amount of value in that video. People want to use these for PC gaming. They're they're nice. They they work fine. This Xbox controllers are very clicky, which I don't like, but besides that, it's it's nice. Yeah, so this is very clicky. So yeah, that's this is one day. People watch my videos, buy something in the same category or the thing, and get some money from it. And it, it varies. Hmm. Yeah, most of, actually most of this stuff here, or the, the thing that I made a video on, Except for uh, this one's a different version of the so that's storm cloud vapor. I have the space one. Can't remember what it's called. This one, deep pink, obviously not the same one is what I got. see this thing I don't think it's the same backpack yeah so that's that's what it is oh I was not even showing it I don't even remember when I switched to that screen all right this is what it looks like so you've got the this is the price that they paid I'm not going to show the other thing Yeah, so basically Xbox controller, these cable ties that I like, made a video on those, battery, backpack, camera strap, wrist, like uh, wristband things for the cosplay, Xbox controller, USB extension cable, it looks familiar, so that's probably the same one I bought at one point or another, made a video on. Those tracks sent me this screen. It doesn't say the specific model, but I assume that's the same one. And I bought the streamer, or uh, yeah, steamer. I bought the steamer for the cosplay thing, the wig. And uh, not totally sure that's the same one, but it looks similar. Oh, Amazon exclusive, that's not the same one. So that's in black. But yes, similar category to the video I made. So in this project, I did the USB cable review, but there's... Uh, I did not do this Mint Mobile unboxing thing. I should probably not do that on, on stream. Edit. I think there's a drink review in here. Mm. Let's see. Switches for a second. Not sure what in here I need to. In this oh, case, I didn't. It's very easy. You're
to not make a video on this. So it looks like I recorded a video of this phone case. Let me see if it's still available. Mm. What is this brand otter? Okay, it says currently unavailable. So that would be a waste of time to make a video at this point. That's disappointing. All right. Yeah, some of this stuff is time dependent. So there's that one. Switch to here for a second. Okay, this might be available. This one is available, so I can edit this video. It's a phone mount. This is all metal. And I bought it for the uh, Anime Central stream idea. So you can see what I'm, I was thinking of using it for. I don't remember if I ended up actually using it, but it's still available to purchase, so I could do that. In that case, a few ways of going about this. CD I guess I could show this. Switch this again. I don't remember what, okay. So this script that I have here is an open source script called auto editor to remove silence and create a project file that I can import into my video editor. It's not perfect. I should probably try to make a script in Magix Vegas, which is the editor that I use to do a similar thing, which hopefully I can make it better, but I haven't attempted that. But this kind of sort of expedites some of my editing, so I've been doing it. to figure out which file it was. Was it this one? Yeah. Wait, what is this one? Okay, these are... I made a video on these on USB cables. What is this one? Okay, this is the one that this, this down is not available on Amazon, so that was a waste of time at this point. The problem with doing phone cases is that the phone gets old and they go, they stop making cases for it. Was it this one? Yeah. So I take this file name 
and I replace this. So now we've got that. And that's it. I open my video editor. Currently using version 19. I think they're up to 21. But it's a paid program and I just haven't had a reason to upgrade. Because money is money and I can spend it somewhere else. So in this case, I have to import the XML file that that script made, which I don't need to show. Whoops, ouch. All right, I keep hitting this cable. I prefer wired cables, but they have their negatives. I mean, wire, I flip and hit it three times in a row as I put my hand down there. Okay. So in this case, I'm importing Which one was it? Four. There we go. That's what it looks like. So it generated the waveform. And it clipped out stuff, but it doesn't clip out as much as I would like. So this guy's. I need to go through this and take out the bad stuff that's not usable and do the whole thing, do the whole process. So I'm going to save this project. Whoops. File save as. And I do it in the folder that I need to do with the right file name. As I mentioned, I use the date and some descriptive stuff. In this case, I'm going to probably do a different folder here. What is this thing called? So it's called Metal Phone Tripod Mount with Cold Shoe 360 Rotated and Tilt Angles Version Compatible with iPhone Tripod Mount Samsung phone clip adapter, so phone clamp holder, video rig mount. That's the title of the product listing. But they have a name for their... Whoops. So I recorded this back in 2023. Uh, 514. All right. Cool. Why is it not working? What is going on? Huh? Huh? It's literally not working. Okay. Did Windows update or something? I'm confused. Okay. Let's try that again. Let me 
Okay, it looks like it's working this time. Metal phone tripod mount. Metal phone, phone tripod mounts for smartphones. The Arnarco. Let me make sure this has audio on my stream at least. Tripod mounts for smartphones. Yep. The Arnarco K metal phone tripod mount. It has two different angles of. Those first piece is not good. Turn on my auto ripple thing. The Arnarco K metal phone tripod mount. It has two different angles of orientation. So you got one on the bottom, one on the top here. Arnarco K. The Arnarco K metal phone. So it's. Phone tripod mount. It has articulation here and it also does rotation. So I was curious to try this out. It is a metal for the most part. Let's take a look. Comes with a comes with a standard hex tool. Take a look. For the most part. Comes with a standard hex tool. As you'll see, it is needed. Not much in the box. Oh, stuff right in there. Specific one. Specific one is the JL1618S. It is the upgraded version. Take a look at the information in the back. There's a specific number on there. It says that it goes from 2.4 inches to 3.7 inches for the phone. This is the phone clamp is spring loaded. It the phone clamp is spring loaded. It also has an actual clamp to prevent it from moving at that point if you want to lock it down. And then it has this articulation on the bottom foot, which is the main reason I picked this up. We've got rotation so that you can angle your phone, and as well as this foot can be angled, so that gives you a good amount of freedom. To Okay, I'm redoing the stuff here. We've got rotation so that you can angle your phone. And then it has this articulation on the bottom foot, which is the main reason I picked this up. Hmm. And as well as this foot can... Actual clamp to prevent it from moving at that point if you want to lock it down. And then it has this articulation on the bottom foot which is the main reason I picked this up. We've got... I have to decide which one's better here. The phone clamp is... Spring-loaded. It also has an actual clamp to prevent it from moving at that point if you want to lock it down. And then it has this articulation on the bottom foot, which is the main reason I picked this up. We've got... Rotation, so that you can angle your phone, and as well as this foot can be angled, so that gives you a good amount of freedom to adjust where the phone is positioned. The phone, the phone clamp itself has... Rub the phone... The phone is positioned. Positioned. The phone clamp itself has rubber on the. The phone clamp itself has rubber on the. The phone cl has rubber. The phone clamp itself has rubber on the back as well as the clamping arms. It is spring loaded, but you can also lock that down with this dial on the back. The phone clamp is spring loaded, but you can also lock it down with this. Phone clamp. The phone clamp itself. The phone clamp is spring loaded, but you can also lock it down with this dial in the back. You've got lock and unlock. So if I were to hold it open and tighten it, you can see that it does not try to uh, compress itself. So once you got your phone in there, I think it's a good idea to clamp that dial down. Pretty nice. On the bottom foot, on the foot, you have another. On the bottom foot. So all this is rehashed. Let me just get rid of it. It says that it goes from 2.4 inches to 3.7 inches for the phone. I do an incremental save here. This program does crash occasionally. Not quite as much as it used to in previous versions, but it still will crash at very bad times. It says that it goes from 2.4 inches to 3.7 inches for the phone. The phone clamp is spring loaded, but you can also lock it down with this dial in the back. You've got lock and unlock. So if I were to hold it open and tighten it, you can see that it does not try to uh, compress itself. So once you got your phone in there, I think it's a good idea to clamp that dial down. Pretty nice. On the foot, you have another angle of articulation, which is the main reason I picked this up. As you'll see, that should be useful. And there is another locking mechanism. You can also rotate. You can rotate your phone. Right you can also... You can rotate your phone. Right here, as well as lock it down with this little hinge. So that's good. There are three quarter twenty connectors on the back. There are three quarter twenty connectors. So that's good. There are three... There are three quarter twenty... 
There are th three quarter 20 connectors on the arm. So you could probably use them either side, but most likely you'd be using them on the back. And then on the foot, also has a 3 8 and a quarter 20 connector. The main thing I was curious about is this articulation from the arm to the foot. And that's going to be the main thing that I'll most likely need and use. Build quality feels pretty good. The spring is a little springy sounding, but it's it seems fine. This is a metal. Springy sounding, but it's it seems fine. Sounding, but it seems fine. This is a metal. I'd say it's probably gonna hold up pretty well, but uh, yeah, cool. There's also a pretty well, but yeah, cool. There's also a quarter twenty. There's also a quarter twenty on the phone. Pretty well. There's also a quarter twenty on the phone clamp area. So if you want to use that directly and then use the arm for accessories or something, you can do that. As well as a cold shoe on the other side of the phone clamp. For the cold shoe, whatever you're going to use, it needs to have its own clamping mechanism because it's just basically a hole for cold shoe. There's also a tensioner or something for the. There's also. There's also a tensioner or something for the spring if you need to adjust that. Although I think you'll need need your own special tool to. Although I think you'll need need your own. Adjust that. Need your own special tool to make that work. Cool. Mm. Although I think you'll you'll need. Although I think you'll need your own. Although I think you'll need your own special tool to make that work. Cool. I have this. I have this. I have this TCL. I have this TCL or. I have this TCL or T-Mobile Revel 5G with an outer box case. Let's see if this works. Here we go. Already, already hitting that mental block. I wish I had generalist AI doing this for me. I don't think it exists yet for this type of thing. 5G with an outer box case. Let's see if this works. Here we go. Pretty much just barely so in this case i didn't have any issue with the height but the clamps are just barely i'm zoning out okay need your own special tool to make that work i have this tcl or t-mobile revel 5g with an outer box case let's see if this works Here we go pretty much just barely so in this case i didn't have any issue with the height but the clamps are just barely holding onto it so something to keep in mind lock that down seems okay i might actually try to uh attach it a second at a second point but uh yeah let's try it to... attach it I might add a second at a second point. Let's try it at the other angle. So in this case, this wouldn't make a ton of sense if you. This is actually probably what I'm going to do. <laughs> so in this case, I don't make a ton of sense, but I do think the other angle. The other angle. This is actually probably what I'm going to do, but it makes it harder to access the screen. But I'm going to use this for other purposes, so it'll be up to you how you orientate everything. Yeah, I kind of wish the foot was different. So if you want to tighten the foot, you're going to have to... Hmm. One thing I could do with this is flip the... I haven't used it much, but I would assume you can take this bottom foot and undo the connection point and then just rotate it so it goes the other direction thing yeah i kind of wish the foot was different so if you want to tighten the foot you're going to have to bring this hex tool along make sure you have it with you to tighten the two different sides so it has a good amount of tension on it and as you rotate this it's going to slowly lose tension here's another phone this is a Here's another phone. This, this is a. Here's another phone. Moto G Stylus. Here's another phone. Moto G Stylus 5G with a case. Let's try it out. Okay. This one also works. All right. Lock it in. I'd say the main gripe that I have with this case it does. I'd say the main gripe that I have with this case. Lock it in. I'd say the main gripe that I have with this case is that the clamps should be a little bit longer so that it feels more secure to the phone. Now they might not be considering people using cases, but I feel like that's going to be pretty widely. You know, I feel like people will do that. People using cases, but I feel like that's going to be, I feel like people will do that. Considering people using cases, but. 
cases. I feel like people will do that. People use using cases, but I feel like people will do that. So, anyways, let's unlock. Yeah. All right. That if, if you do use your if you do use a phone directly. Do that. If you do use a phone directly with this clamp, you'll have no issues most likely. It'll be a little bit easier in that case. I prefer using cases, so it still works. I do like that it has the two locking mechanisms on the clamp. I do like it has the two locking mechanisms. I do like... I do like... It still works. I do like that it has the two locking mechanisms on the mount. All right. In my case, I'm going to be using it on a backpack. A lot of the time, got this quick release, which will attach to either here or here. Not totally sure how it's going to work. Let me see. I want the phone to be... Here or here. Should be labeling this. In my case, I'm going... Not totally sure how it's going to work. Let me see. I want the phone to be like this. Probably have to attach it like that. Obviously, you could put this on a tripod very easily. That'll work out. But I'm doing a bit of something more novel. Let's see how it works. Hmm, if I were to... Attach it like this. I could do something like that, and then rotate it like this, or actually like that. I think that would work. So in my case, something like this. I've got this arm to... Hmm. Hmm. Oh. Let's see how it works. And I've got this arm to uh, put the phone like this. Yeah. See so yeah, that could that could work out. I don't really need to show this in the review. That could work out. All right, it's already loosening up. Isn't that amazing? If I wanted to have it vertical. Something more novel. Let's see how it works. That could work out. All right. Work out, but I'm doing a bit of something more novel. See how it works. That could work out. Have it vertical. I could do that. Oh, should I pull this over? Some more of it's showing. Or here. Obviously, you could put this on a tripod very easily. That'll work out. But I'm doing a bit of something more novel. See how it works. That could work out. Have it vertical. I could do that. So it gives a lot of options. A lot of mounting options potentially. Just the. So it gives a lot of. I could do that. A lot of mounting options. Potentially, which is the goal. It's not the way here. Definitely need this to uh, make sure it's going to work out for you. Come on, let go. That should be good. Ideally. Definitely need this to uh, make sure it's going to work out for you. That could work out. Have it vertical. I could do that. A lot of mounting options, potentially, which is the goal. It's not the way here. Definitely need this to uh, make sure it's going to work out for you. Come on, let go. That should be good. Ideally, I can do something like this, which is probably a better option. So something like that, maybe. Here we go. I think that'll work. I'm going to have a... Work out for you. Here we go. I think that'll work. I'm going to have a cable coming down and then going up to the back of the backpack. Coming down and then going up. Work. I'm gonna have a cable coming down and going up to the back of the backpack. The main thing I'm focused on is the cameras in this specific instance. Obviously, whatever you want to do is up to you and how you want to do it. But you have a lot of options, which is good. The main potential issue is that it's not super convenient to adjust this bottom portion. There we go. It's like that. Like that. This bottom portion. I wish I had another axis. I think that could work too. 
So in this case, something like this, so it's So in this case, it's something like this, so it's not going to work. Um, hmm, yeah. Some other orientation, thinking like that. Yeah, maybe. It's probably the best one, so that uh, one less thing to move out of position. Thanks, gravity. Yeah, anyway. It's probably the best one. on is the cameras in this specific instance obviously whatever you want to do is up to you and how you want to do it but you have a lot of options which is good the main potential issue is that it's not super convenient to adjust this bottom portion portion probably the best one so that's uh, one less thing to move out of position thanks gravity yeah yeah Let's look at the multi-axis metal. Dang, why do I have so much? Eh? Oh. Oh, man. I guess I had more ideas after. Let's look at the multi-axis metal phone mount by our our narco K. Let's look at the let's look at the multi let's look at the multi. Let's look at the multi-axis metal phone mount by our narco K or whatever they're called, the JL one six one eight S. So far, it seems pretty solid. Not as convenient as it could possibly be, but it is nice that it has the two locking mechanisms. You might might be a little bit slow to uh, deal with this bottom angle, but other than that, pretty solid. I wish the clamp arms were a little bit longer in my case, although if you're using a phone directly on this, it should be fine. Still, it does work with my phone with their cases. Scott of Tech I Suppose, Scott of Photography Bonsai, Tech I Suppose. Scott of Photography Bonsai, Tech I Suppose, see ya. Scott of Tech, tech I Suppose, Scott of Tech I Suppose, see ya. All right. Open this, lock it down. That is the full extension lockdown. So I realized I needed to, to show, or wanted to show more. That is the full extension lockdown. That is a full extension locked down. Let's take a look here. Measuring over four and with the rubber, maybe four, a little bit under four. So 3.7 inches seems about right. Let's take a look here. That is a full extension locked down. That is a full extension locked down. Let's take a look here. Measuring over four and with the rubber, maybe four, a little bit under four. So 3.7 inches seems about right. It's really gonna depend. You might be measuring the tip here. Most likely. So I should take this. It says that it goes from 2.4 inches to 3.7 inches for the phone. The phone clamp is spring loaded. Let's put it right here. At the very least, it seems to be consistent with their measure series as desired. So if you wanted to forego this portion, you could attach directly to this area, which is something I might actually want to try. Nice thing about this, it provides a lot of options for mounting and adjusting. Construction seems solid, it offers a lot of articulation possibilities. So you got the bottom here, you have that one, and of course the clamp. Okay, I don't think I need any of this. Delete. Oh, 
Okay. This is one pass. I'll have to go over it again and then start trimming silent areas that I don't like. And then go in the video and pull out better footage, put it on top and just make it more continuous. Instead of jumpy. Good start at the very least. Should have edited this a long time ago. Now is better than never. Pull up steam. Actually, what would be nice to have a, a work set up and then right next to it have a DDR Stepmania set up so I could do this and then jump over to the that and play a few rounds and then come back to this. That'd be very nice. But I don't really have a area for two things like that. Hmm. I occasionally add stuff to my streaming notes topic stuff, but like it's 97 pages. <laughs> it's quite a bit. Whoops. First things here says, oh, 8-Bit Guy is a YouTuber. He made a video. This is stuck. Talking about some of the challenges he's having with viewership drops and things like that. Alright, yeah, this appears to be still working. Ooh. See if I can read that and drive at the same time. Okay, I had commented on the video and then I pasted my comments in my notes. Basically, from what I remember, this was quite a few days ago. Um. He had seen a reduction in viewership. And of course that comes with lower advertising revenue. You know, Google ad revenue. And other things too. And he doesn't take sponsors in, in the sense that they would pay him money to him to show something or whatever or just randomly have an, a burned in ad that he would read type of thing I don't see an issue with those I would do it if I had companies that were decent asking me about it but my viewership's even less so it's not like he's he's still doing well in the sense that He's doing well compared to other people, but he's not, he's doing less well than he was a year or two ago. Hmm. See, I had said, said to hear that the larger channels such as yours had viewership and revenue difficulties as well. I haven't made it 
financially, but uh, been like one tenth of the way there. I made I wrote an article about that on my website and posted a community thing about it a while back. Uh, it is rough seeing your work drop and viewership and such, because you're trying to make it go up, not go down. <laughs> Then I also said my largest channel in photo videos, around 12,000 subscribers, six million over 6 million total views. Getting like 75k views for quite a while and then it dropped to 50 and it's been at 50, slightly under, slightly above. For a while now and according to my analytics 13 percent less views 23 percent less watch time and 33 or 30 percent less ad revenue year over year so it compares the previous year to the current year or i mean in this case it would be 2023 to 2022 is what it was comparing Yeah, so I, I had a 30% drop in ad revenue. So I think it might be somewhat platform related, but it could be topic related. It could be who knows what. In my case, I've done a mix of uh, short vertical videos, which they've been pushing on their their uh, platform he hasn't done that so i don't know what his numbers are but i try i've been open to different formats and maybe it helped maybe it hurt me from a viewership standpoint but there's no way to know at this point because i've, I've done it already and it's you know So I probably would have had even less viewership if I had not bothered making any shorts. But my shorts, I wouldn't say, have been amazingly uh, successful. Some of them have gotten maybe 10, 20k views. Sure? But they haven't done like millions, which some people get millions of shorts views somehow. I don't know what they're doing or what, but... Also, the ad revenue from shorts is a fraction of regular views, regular video views. So there isn't a huge direct monetary incentive to make shorts. And also, it's tough to say that people watching shorts go and watch your regular videos or subscribe to you and then watch your regular videos because they're watching shorts. So maybe they'll watch more of your shorts, but again, it doesn't have a, an amazing direct relation to ad revenue. But I mean, of course, getting more viewership is good in general, and you can potentially sell them product and things, which I don't have any thing that I've made. Or you can, you know, direct them to things and stuff. Or even do direct uh, sponsorship stuff, which I haven't had anyone cont contact me. But in his case, he hasn't done shorts. So I'm not totally sure what his situation is. One thing I can do is look at uh, Social Blade. I'll do that in a second and see what his stats are, like what, what's available that I can see. I'm kind of curious. But uh, yeah, it's, it's certainly not, 
It's difficult to keep motivation, especially in my case when I've had a delusion of thinking I can make it work financially. And what I'm making just hasn't connected with people enough. Either maybe it's the actual content, which is probably the main thing. Um, but there could be other reasons too. I don't know. Oh, that was weird. I don't really know at this point. But uh, it's easy to blame myself, so I just do that. Ooh. What button is the... Oh, it's this button. There we go. Okay, let's take a look. So he was shifting his, what he's going to do for 2024, which is, some of it sounds pretty interesting. Let me see here. Eight bit guy. Okay, that did not. Uh, so you have a different name or something? Sometimes older channels, they have different, like, names compared to what they're, they call their channel. Oh, the 8-bit guy. We see that. Yeah. I'm surprised it wouldn't show it on their website here. Whoops. There we go. All right. Yeah, so based on my idea of success, like financial enough enough financial success here, he's like on this value here, 1 million views a month, considering ad revenue, I feel like is viable, but it, he has a family and who knows how expensive his area is, so. Yeah, that for me, this would be amazing, but I'm like 1 million, I'm actually like eight, 800,000, a little bit over for last year, monetized, monetizable views, but like not all of them are monetized. And he's like 10 times that, which I wish that I could get to this number. <laughs> but for him, it's not great based on his needs and such. But I feel like 1 million is the breaking point where you're going to have enough visibility, enough ad revenue to like function as a person in the, in the United States financially. Obviously, this is not great. And it, it depends on the genre. But yeah, that would definitely help out in my case. And in my case, I would do more sponsored stuff because I, I don't see a problem with it. So he's only got 313 uploads. So each of his view, each of his videos is so much more valuable than mine. I can pull up my 
thing as well. Maybe it's, I don't, I don't want to speculate really. Here's mine. Yeah, so <laughs> one million per month compared to fifty thousand. I get more than this, I think. Uh actually I can I can look at it. Let me see. One of the negatives too is I get just enough comments and stuff that I have to see a few, but it's like, eh. What was this? Thank you, it works for its intended purpose, but despite my measurements, it didn't fit in my bag. Good thing it's flexible. Oh, yeah, this is nice. So I made this little video about doing a DIY uh, camera padded area in any backpack. I was doing some sewing and ideas on materials, foam type stuff that I had. And it's nice to see people doing that. So... So that's cool. And it's nice that this is a short vertical, so I'm really not getting much out of it. And I don't remember if I did, if you have a backpack that does not have any. I don't think I did a regular video on this. Area for a camera, you can make something pretty easily. In my case, some cloth, probably something bright so you can see stuff in there. Also, some type of foam. In my case, PC anion card box. That foam works really nicely. Of course, thread a sewing machine, and you also use a winter hat. Cut five panels from the foam, in this case, one bottom panel, and four side panels. Of course, the shape will depend on your backpack. You're going to cover the panels in cloth, just sew around each panel, and give yourself quite a bit of room on all the edges. From there, you're going to connect all the panels together, leaving, of course, one area open at the top. Before you attach the hat, you can reverse your padded area. So that way, if you leave one panel open while you're sewing the hat onto the padded area, you can reverse that again and then just sew that one open area so you have a cleaner edge on the top. Up to you. So now you've got an extra padded area for cameras or whatever else you can put in your backpack. Scarf to be bonsai. See ya. If you have a backpack. Yeah, so... Uh... I don't know why I didn't do a full video of that, but that was a fun one. I should probably do more stuff like that. I just have to, th I tend to not give myself a lot of time to think and work on projects, which could be part of my problem. Because creativity needs time. A lot of them. Yeah, I think I've I have a brain that's creative, but even even in that case, if you restrict your ability to think, and you know, if, I'm, if all I'm doing is editing basic videos, that's I'm not giving myself time to come up with stuff like this. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that's the, oh, I was going to look at the, whoops, ad revenue. I think I closed it. Yeah, I closed it. <laughs> Whatever. It's probably around this. I think it might be less. I think it was like 2200 Something like that. So his number is probably close to this. 53000 Which, for a family of... I think he has at least one kid. Not sure. But it did kind of sort of meet him um, in the suburbs of Chicago when he went to a convention. But he's going to cut back on conventions for 2024 because it's an expense, obviously. He's also going to cut back on certain types of videos that are expensive and also merch like or projects that relate to a making a thing was very expensive for him based on what he gets out of it so i think producing physical media games and stuff was a big time expense and he didn't make much from it stuff like that and it makes sense but he's going to somehow work I mean you can watch the video obviously work and be part owner in an arcade in his area which is super cool I wouldn't mind doing something like that too because I like arcades but uh, hopefully it works out for him and I had given the suggestion of live streaming at the arcade which I kind of doubt he would do because he's not He's a bit older, and I don't think he's into that stuff, but it would be interesting. Let me see if I can... The problem with this website and just accessing other channel stats, there isn't a ton of information, like year on year and such, or year over year, I should say. Maybe detail stats. Um, yeah. Only shows a month. It looks pretty consistent for the month. Okay, here's May 21. Yeah, I'm not really sure where he's seeing it drop. At least based on this, he's maybe he was back before May 2021 because this is pretty consistent. It's actually getting more views. Maybe he saw a drop and it's just not showing here. Well, it's 265 million. Is that total? Maybe it's right here. Maybe he was used to this little bump here and then it trailed off. And then, yeah, it went up slightly here. Hard to say. Okay. Yeah.
Okay. Right here. See, the, this is probably on average where he was. Obviously not this, but down here. That's probably what he was getting back before this gra this uh, tracking. And now he's down here on average, which is a visible drop. So that was 2021. Hmm. I don't know. It, may, it might be, be even worse. Uh, it's tw January, so that's current. I guess there is actually... If you look at the bottom end of these compared to these ones, I think it is a, even a more significant drop and there's fewer peaks here. So this trails down. It's a big dip instead of a shorter dip. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see if that shows in mind too. Uh, what's, I think it's this one. Man, mine looks very different. I don't know why mine looks so different here. Maybe this peak here is just skewing the look of it. These two big peaks. <sighs> okay, just even looking at the numbers here. Like the actual numbers. I assume these are month numbers. So we've got 1.4 million tap end in a month. He's currently at a million, which doesn't make sense compared to this. But some of these are 120,000. Or maybe that's week to week. November 6th. Of, okay, that's per week. Oh, so each step here is a, a week worth of viewership. That can't be right. 22, yeah, it says 29, 22 to 29, that's seven days. Hmm. So back over here, at the very least, he's got like 129,000, 155,000. This one spikes up. 500,000 but over here it's 787,000 and then the low end here is 187,000 250,000 but down here it's 123,400 so that's it is a drop clearly his lows are lower his highs are lower Yeah. In the case of mine, it looks much different, but this is this is clearly a drop right here. So, and I think it was. Uh, was it? I think April. I thought April was where I noticed it the most. January, March, April. Yeah. So right here. And then you go bloop, bloop. So I was getting 18, 
17,000. Whatever views per week. And now it's 10,000. So it, you, you ask why, what's going on. I think it might be YouTube itself. I mean, they push the shorts views. Although in my case, I have been doing shorts. But it could be genre. It could be who the heck knows what at this point. But I, I clearly have a drop here. And I haven't been able to make anything that gets me going higher. In my case, one of the other issues is I've been I make reviews of gear and stuff that has basically aged out of relevance. I've talked about this like ten times now, and that's probably part of my problem. Is some of my most viewed stuff is old enough to this point that it's just not as relevant or things people want to watch. And they're not even amazing. They're not great videos in my opinion anyways. And a lot of the videos that I like and like the content of and stuff just don't get the viewership for whatever reason. People don't have an interest in them. So when I go on a photo walk or something, I go to a convention, take photos, make a video about it, talk about it, show photography. It just doesn't, for whatever reason, interest people much. And I don't know what I can do with that general idea to make it interesting, except try to be funnier or include more jokes and things, which I probably should try to do more. I've made weird joke like goofy videos in the past but they're probably too niche as well. I don't know. What time is it? Oh, I forgot that I didn't change my... Uh... I guess I could keep playing this. Another topic I have in my notes here. I don't remember if I've talked about any of these, but... Whoa. There was a Reddit post. I think it was in the either AI or future something subreddit. I can't remember the name of it. Uh... I don't have a link, so I can't remember specifically what it was talking about. But someone had mentioned... Oh, how AI, GPT technology and stuff had, had made schoolwork irrelevant. You know, where a kid... Or college age... But... Whatever, you know, grade school to college. When they have access to ChatGPT, even in its current state, they can basically a lot of the normal schoolwork is irrelevant. Apparently, I haven't looked into that much. 
but some of it I can see being true. And the idea is... I never was a fan of tests in school, and I wasn't a fan of homework, of course. I think it's bad because you a person should go to school and learn there and then do they really need to have more work after basically what is work shouldn't they have downtime and give their brain a, a break and such so i don't i don't think homework and especially work over breaks is is good either in my opinion I don't know, I don't have any data for, to say if it's actually good or bad. But it was kind of related to that post. And what some of the people and I had speculated, what could, which direction and such schools could take things. So for example, even having access to the internet kids and whatever they could basically have the GPT stuff do their assignments and especially at lower levels it would be very difficult for teachers to know Are you sure? if they're cheating or not so what should probably happen is that schools are, are are very focused on in-class assessment, in-class teaching, in-class work. I always pretty much enjoyed the work that uh, was done in class, like I can think of in college programming assignments that were done in like at least partly done in, in class or we had time to do them in class jeez and you would work as a group sometimes and help people like learn to interact with your peers in a, those, those settings and I think those are good so moving forward in my opinion, I think class and schooling should be focused on giving people the, the source material that they need, but not giving them like out of school assignments because they can just use technologies and things to make stuff that looks good enough to be passable but it's not them actually doing it so I have a strong focus on in class teaching and work instead of giving them garbage like powerpoints and stuff and not actually going through the process in class so let's say half of the day they learn half of the, half of the day they apply knowledge in class partly in a group maybe individual depending on the situation and not giving them access to internet based computers obviously because they can do use it in class and cheat but giving them i had suggested like ebooks so an ebook loaded up with enough information is a great source material thing and it's easy and it's got a variety of stuff it doesn't specifically have to be like e-ink but whatever you know with the internet disabled so they can't go and ask chat gpt to write their thing for them but i mean that's not to say they shouldn't learn how to do that stuff because you can have situations where they do specifically use tools like that to do things which is fine, but it's not going to be an all-time thing. Um, so 
stuff like that. That way, they go to school, they learn to, they learn and then they apply knowledge in group settings. They learn how to interact with people and as teams or whatever, if, you know, not all the time, but it's a good amount of time. They learn how to actually apply things in those settings with some source material, with whatever guides and things that they have available. But going and using the internet isn't necessary, in my opinion. As long as you have a curated knowledge base for them to access, then they can use that instead. Let me try this one. Where's the ducks? Let's do orange chuck. Also, I personally never like testing. I feel like it's a bad way to assess a person. Especially like multiple choice garbage and trying to regurgitate facts. Like, oh wow, you can memorize things. Amazing. So I never studied much on tests, for tests. And I, I paid for that. But it, even then, I still didn't. I'm talking like in college. So my college, especially in college, testing is such a huge percentage. Which feels like a cop out way to do college so uh, I was never thrilled with that but I I don't think the my concern is that as these AI tools and things I mean they're already available but even more so they're probably gonna be pr trying to push to Assess people with tests more and more, which I think they've done too much already. So I think in class work, again, with as a group and not as a group, I think should be the main focus rather than testing and all that garbage. And certain people are going to have a natural leg up in testing situations because their brain would be better at like physically better at memorization obviously some people apparently have uh what the heck is that called visual memory or whatever it's called and they clearly have an advantage compared to people that don't have that physical trait and I don't think it's a learned trait, it's a genetic thing. So you're automatically giving those people however percentage it is. If you were to really, really focus on testing, even more so, than the other people that don't have that. Mm -hmm. But to me... Again, all of this in class. You go and have assignments. You apply knowledge, apply concepts in class. The teacher is there to actually do their job and, and help the students apply knowledge instead of here's this information dump. You go figure it out after school type of thing. So, with that example of a pro programming class, there were times where we would work in class. And I think there were some of the more valuable situations, because of course they would do a bunch of PowerPoint garbage. Which, you do too much information dump, you just, there's going to be a limit to a person's ability to 
remember in the moment all that stuff and apply it later on. So you're basically wasting the student's time dumping information on them. Of course, this is all my opinion. Uh... And technologies like AI and ways to analyze data from all of this type of thing, I think could help find like the perfect balance of this type of stuff, which I don't, I'm surprised there, there probably is our, our studies about things like this, but I don't know how detailed they are or what they are, you know, I haven't looked into that. But there's probably a pretty nice balance for the average of a average student of being shown things, giving them time in class to apply it with the teacher there, with other students there, that you can all work off of mutual understanding and knowledge instead of out of class, because it just doesn't make sense to do out of class. It's stupid. I'm sorry. It's a, it's a lazy way of teaching. And again, people don't have to always be in a group doing it, but I think there's a strong benefit of in-class work. The, the quack in that uh, area with the reflected sounds. Oh, that was funny. Yeah, like online courses, which are fine. I understand people. some people like doing that. But I don't know how it's going to be a valid form of degree and such take an online course because you can cheat on all of it at some point with AI as it advances you can basically give it all of your descriptions and let it do, the, do it for you and then what good is this little piece of paper saying that you have this ability even more so than it already doesn't have a huge amount of validity to it at times. And part of it if there's a issue where a student isn't into it, doesn't understand it, doesn't want to do it there should be ways to apply teaching to those instances to help them actually get into it. Because not everyone's the same. Again, based on data research and such, of teaching, schooling, whatever, I would assume, like I said, I would assume there are studies and such that go over challenges and differences between people when they're trying to learn and apply knowledge and stuff like that. And maybe it is used, I just don't, I haven't looked into it. but I don't have amazingly fond memories of schooling. Like throughout, I can't, there are instances, all of, now that I think about it, all of the fond school memories that I have 
from high school, uh, grade school things that I can remember at this point. There was a programming class. At this point, I already I've talked about this before about Dillion. At this point, I already knew programming for the most part. But there was a class in high school. I don't remember which which grade it was. Uh, the teacher was Mr. Jones. I barely, I very rarely remember names of teachers, so I remembered his name. And it, I think it was the first programming class that I was able to take because they didn't exist at that school. And so, for whatever reason, somehow, I got into the first one. And I was helping them, like, after school, actually, I think it was. A girl and I... There might have been another one or two. We were installing RAM into these old 286 computers so that oops, so that they could have the ability to compile uh, C++ code in the compiler that was available on these old computers for, you know, the lab. So it was like the first instance. Whoops. Anyways, I remember doing that. And I remember a lot of the classes were a mix of showing us how to do things and actually doing it in class, applying the knowledge to make a program or whatever, based on what we had learned in that day. Now, it doesn't take into account larger concepts, things that can't be done in a day, but you can, you can plan out your class and, uh, take on larger concepts that way. But that specific class is basically the most memorable one I can think of at the moment. In the structure and format of his class, I probably did learn things, even though I already knew a lot of programming at the time. And, uh, yeah. So, whoops, I guess I'm supposed to jump there. So that type of class, that format, I think can be applied to any, any topic. There we go. Um... Let me see here. Trying to think of anything else I would say about that. There, I mean, there were a few other classes I can remember. Uh, I remember Spanish class in middle school, but not actually the class. It's more, actually, language classes have a lot of in-class Like, uh, practice and stuff, obviously. So I do remember a little bit more of those. I had a Spanish class in middle school and a French in high school, I think it was. In the Spanish class, the, ma the main thing I remember is going on a few trips with the teacher. And, you know, trips are more interesting. Get some actual, you know, do stuff. So those are always good, but there's an expense, obviously, to stuff like that. Yeah. Anyways, that's basically... <clears throat> 
I do think there's going to be a some type of shift in how people are taught. Although I really hope it doesn't go towards tests and it goes more towards in-class application of what they learn in class. Homework is stupid. And also creates... Homework makes the idea of work outside of work. And that shouldn't be a, a thing in this society. Work outside of work. It creates the wrong idea overall and it trains people to think that it's okay to have work outside of work. Also, I don't like the idea of... Well, I don't want to get into it too much. But, uh, yeah. Let's see if I have any other quick topics. I'm going to stop pretty soon here. Mm. There's another AI Reddit post slash uh, comment. Uh, I was talking about why I don't think the chat GPT is actual AI stuff. And I use one example I did to test it out. I think I've talked about this before. Um, I have notes on uh, Stepmania, DDR, DIY pad stuff. Different types of sensors that people use now. I do want to look more into that. Oh, here's one. Sucralose genotoxic. There's a research that people did on that relatively recently. All right, I think I'm done. Let's see. I don't see anything too more too exciting in my notes. Oops. Exit. Okay. Yeah, all right. I'm going to head out. Anyways, I'll see you around. Whoops. Let me... I don't have a button for my outro screen. So, yeah.